Hey, solopreneurs, welcome back to Point No Code, where we unlock the secret to success for one person startups in the business world. Today, I have a very super, super exciting topic, uh, for you today. We're going to be comparing bubble pricing and flood of flow pricing. A lot of you have been asking me, hey, Paul, which of this tool, which of this tool is going to scale with me? You know, which of this tool, uh, can I start with and it's not going to have a deep in my pocket? So today I'm going to be explaining all that. And I'm sure if you stick around to the end of the video, you'll be able to make very informed decisions and you'll be able to tell yourself, hey, I think I'm going to go with this two or I'm going to go with this other two. So before we dive in, do make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never ever have to miss valuable insights for your celebrity journey. So let's get started with Bubble. Bubble itself is one of my favorite tool. It's one of those two that I use for um, for building web application. I have a couple of applications in running on Bubble, and I and I really like it a lot. So we have this uh, the pricing plan. If you're pay, paying annually twenty nine dollars a month to get started with, and then we also have if you're paying monthly thirty two dollars a month to get started with. So for every person who reach out to me and ask me about Bubble plan, I will always say, hey, get started with the twenty nine dollar plan and see how it goes. See how many users you are able to get. See how you are able to move the needle from having, from any no money at all as a solopreneur to having, you know, a whole lot of money and see how you'll be able to move the needle starting with just $29 a month. And then when you're good with that, when you see that you haven't paying users, then you can keep going up and up and up. Bubble itself has side packs. You know, just $29 a month is not the only pack there is. $119 a month is not the only pack there is. It has a whole lot of side packs. For example, for the $29 a month, you can see you have 179, 175k workload units per month. You have two days of server logs. And if, you, if I click here to see the full comparison, it begins to make a whole lot of sense, right? So you can see like for the infrastructure, which I think this is where you should be really concerned about right here, the infrastructure. So we have like monthly work lo workload for the for the startup plan is 175k. And then you can buy a whole lot more for 0.3 per 1k. W. Then we have um five five storage of fifty GB. So I've really gotten to this point where I've hit this block. You know, I've had to buy more five storage at um fifty GB, and then you can always buy additional storage for three dollars per one hundred GB every month. So if you're running things like a social media application, you're, you're running a you you own a startup that requires a whole lot of people to, you know, keep coming back to your website, then you're going to really spend more on Bubble, right? You're going to spend a whole lot more. And especially if you have a lot of backend flows. So when I mean backend flow, you like, like cron jobs, you know, like when a person makes a payment, you want to do something in your database and that's just handled by Bubble itself. You know, you have a whole lot of that running and you have a whole lot of updates, you know, you are updating your database a whole lot of time. So you're going to be using a whole lot of workload units and it might get full on time. So I'm going to show you something. I'm going to log into one of my applications so I can show you um, how that works. Okay. Just a minute. So this is the, this is the backend of one of my, one of my application that I currently worked on. And you can see that I've used 210k out of 250 uh, workload unit for this month. And this is the 4th of January, right? So as users get to come into the application, you know, do stuff in the application, register in the application, I get to have, I get to use more workload units. And it gets to a point where Bubble gets to tell me, hey, bro, you're using so many units, then you have to pay. And you can see also my initial storage was 100 gigabyte, and now I'm increasing. So I can see I can buy a whole lot more and I can pay months, right? I can buy an additional 1,900 gig and I can pay $57 a month. So this will be added to the, the price that I currently pay each month, right? As you keep on buying packs, you keep on uh, uh, increasing your monthly charge. It doesn't stay at 29, or it, neither does it stay at 119, just like we saw. So there are some side attractions. So you can see right here, this is $29 a month. You're buying this workload 200K, right? $29 a month. Then you have $99 a month where you can increase your workload units, right? So if you're asking about workload units, you can go ahead and read up the, the bubble, the bubble, um, documentation. So just imagine the workload unit is, is just the way that bubble calculates the things you do with the database. How many things you're deleting, you're updating, you're writing, you're viewing, you know, you're searching from his database. That's just how he does it. So you can see that this specs can go all the way to 1,499 a month. So you can see how it is. So 
the pricing itself is not very, very, very stable. It's not saying I'm going to pay 29 and I'm going to pay 29 for a lifetime. So you really have to think about exactly what you're going to be doing. How much traffic are you expecting? And then use that to make very informed decisions and see if um, going for bubble is right for you. So then let's go to Flutterflow. Flutterflow is super cool for me. I think so. Um, I'm, I'm currently based in Nigeria right now. And right now, if you want to get on the standard plan, you're paying $12 a month, which I think is cool, right? Which I think is cool. But it's a very cool thing to start with a pro plan. This is where I'm at. Uh, I'm at a pro plan. I use the pro plan and the team plan most of the time. And I do $29, a month because I'm currently in Nigeria. So we have this priority discount, right? So you can see here, regional discount which i think is cool and then with the regional discount i'm able to spend just 28 dollars hosting flutterflow every month but but if you're in uh the west you're in america uk or any other western countries you're going to be paying 70 dollars a month for the pro plan so compared to what we go compared to what you're going to get with uh bubble $70 a month is super cool, right? It's super cool because you're going to get everything that Flutterflow offers except the ability to add somebody, to add a team member. So if you want to add a team member, you have to pay another $70 for that particular team member to work on your project together. Probably you're working on your project and you have another developer working with you side by side. So that's how you're going to do it. But but if you're working as a solopreneur, then $70 a month is a very good plan to get into. But if you're buying, if you're paying monthly, which I think you should, if you're going to be uh, working on your app for a very long time, then that would drive the, the cost down reasonably by $20. So instead of $70, you're paying $50 a month. But this is not the only cost that you get to incur when you're using um, Flutterflow for your application. Because this particular cost that you're seeing right here, it's only for using Flutterflow to develop your user interface, to develop your mobile application. There is also Firebase cost. That if you decide to go with Firebase, you have to pay this Firebase cost. But for the for the for the most uh, time, you're going to be, it's going to be free for you, right? It's going to be free for you, especially when you're just getting started. But Firebase can get a whole lot of, a whole lot expensive as you keep going, right? So you can see all the plans. You can see real time database is a hundred GB, a uh, one, uh, 200 K database, right? Because yeah, pay as you go blaze plan. You just need to add your card. You're not going to be charged anytime soon once your card is there. So you can see a whole lot of cloud storage, 0 0.0026 per gigabyte, right? It's reasonable cheap because this particular, this particular platform is owned by the tech biomat called Google, called Google. And so there's a whole lot that you can benefit from it. But the fact here is that Firebase is a no SQL database. So you can rack up cost a whole lot, right? You can rack up cost a whole lot, especially if you're looking for Especially if you're running things like a social media application and you're doing things that requires people to keep playing and keep checking up files, keep playing, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. Because the more screws they do on your application, the more requests you make. So if you're running an app that requires people to make so many read and write requests, you might incur a lot of charges. But another alternative is using Superbase, which I think is super cool. Superbase will charge you $25 a month. This will push up your plan to about $75 a month if you're subscribing for a yearly plan on Flutterflow, and then you're doing a monthly plan of 25 on in Superbase. This will give you a fixed cost and say, hey, this is all you get when you're using a fixed cost. And you have eight gigabytes of database space, which I think you're not going to rack up in any, in a record time because you're a solopreneur. Uh, we have a hundred GB file storage, 200, 250 GB bandwidth. 100k monthly monthly active users included so that means you're gonna ha you can have 100,000 person sign up here on your application if you're using the super base art right and so you can use uh about um 2 million edge functions which i think it's super cool and a whole lot so you can see then they also have the team plan right the team plan but i'm not sure if there's something that you want to sign up for right now but i think that the pro plan it's enough for you to get started and meanwhile there's also a uh, fair usage right so you, it's not going to be for life there's also the fair usage stuff that you have to that you have to think about so you, you have to optimize your database in such a way that you are not using more than you that you want to so there's a whole lot of um you can go come here to compare your plan stay on the firebase website you can come here and compare your plan and see the perks that you get and what you don't get in each of the plan but the thing is this that according to the superbase documentation it said that firebase it's way superbase is uh i think about 2x faster than firebase and also superbase is a 
relational database. So relational database, we are more used to relational database than, uh, no, than, um, uh, no SQL database that Firebase provides. And also relational database like Superbase is super useful, especially if you're building something that ha- that needs a an admin area. You know, you want to collect all the data in your application and you want to display it as an admin for you to actually see. It's super easy for you to display a non-relational database and bring all the data into one place, search for those data. It's very easy to do that. But for a for a non-relational database, oh, it might be a bit difficult for you to accomplish all of that. So I think you should, uh, you will be able to make better decisions now and see the one, what you, you will take and what you're not going to take. And besides, when you're building, when you're thinking of saying, Oh, can I be, should I build with bubble or should I build with Flutterflow? There are a few things that do, there are a few things that you have to think about, but I'm going to cover this more elaborately on my other video, on another video. You have to think about where exactly are you going to be launching this platform? Bubble, yeah, Bubble is cool. I hear they're going to release a mobile, a mobile builder in the future. I think this year, but right now, Bubble is more suited for building web application than building mobile applications because for Flutterflow, it comes wrapped with everything you need to build mobile application. But for Flutterflow, it comes wrapped with everything that you need to build a web application, especially if you're building software as a service, which I think is super cool. That's a wrap for me. So I think that right now you should have a better, better, um, idea of which of the choose to choose. Is it going to be bubble for me or is it going to be Firebase? Is it going to be bubble database or is it going to be Firebase? Is it going to be bubble itself or is it going to be further floor? So go ahead, leave it in the comment section. Let me know what you think about. Tell me the one you're currently using right now and let me know why you're using it. Yeah, there's a free gift in the comment section. Just click on it and you'll be able to receive it. And if you're looking forward to launching your no code application, feel free to click on the link and I'll definitely, definitely reach out to you. We'll get talking. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy. Bye.